Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. Hey, good morning to you. Thank you so much for taking time to join in and letting us share with you some of the stuff that we do around here and mostly about fishing. And uh, it is, <laughs> I don't know if I'm in South Florida this morning, got up this morning, and according to the uh, according to the weather station, it was 47 degrees in Palm Beach County. Um, and I know where I'm at, it was probably another couple of degrees cooler than that. So I'm doing a, a, a rapid wake up here. My blood is warming up. It is definitely a chilly morning, but that uh, shouldn't stop anybody from enjoying the beautiful area that we have here. This morning I have Carolyn, <clears throat> excuse me, I, gosh, I got a, something caught in my throat. Good morning. <laughs> Let's try it again. I have Carolyn Stash with me. Oh, I swallowed and went down the wrong way. I have Carolyn Stash with me with Atlas Tracks. Uh, my my uh, tagline for her is if you want to protect what you love to the max, you need to call Carolyn at Atlas Tracks because that's what she can do for you. Good morning, Carolyn. Well, good morning, Riscala. Um, thank you for having, for having me on today. And yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about with that cold weather. Um, uh, I know you go out and walk your dog on Sunday, so I did kind of the same. Uh, how's everything going? Oh, I, I swallowed and went down the wrong way, and dog got into that little bitty piece of whatever it was got caught up, and that really caused me to cough. Well, let's see. Uh, I want to say thanks to some special friends this morning. Thanks to High Point Radio. They're up there on 1690 AM, New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania, one of our affiliates. Uh, KYAH, 540 AM, Utah's Talk Authority, another affiliate. And a new affiliate, YachtRockMiami.com. Smooth grooves all day long, all night long. Thank you, Yacht Rock Miami. They are also an affiliate, and we will be officially on their station uh, next week. But I think we're doing a test run this morning, so they may be hearing us there as well. So a big thank you to all of the affiliates. <clears throat> a big thank you to WCETFM. My goodness, 101.7 out of North Carolina. Uh, a big thank you to all of you who join in and help us do what we do that we love doing so much, and that is you know, sharing fishing. <laughs> did you do any fishing this last week? Actually, I did not make it out on the water. The, the uh, sea conditions were pretty rough, anywhere from 5 feet to 9 feet from what I hear. Uh, there was a big Buccaneer Cup going on out of Palm Beach, and some of the video footage I saw of these big sport fishes, they were just filling their cockpits with water, mm. packing down on sailfish. Wow. Uh, so it was, a, it was a little bit gnarly, small craft, craft advisories down here in the Deerfield Beach area. So I, uh, I decided to wash windows this week and, uh, and get out on the road and clean up the backyard a little bit. So project, project week. <laughs> Good thing. Isn't it amazing how much water, when they're backing down, if the wave comes up as they're backing down, how much water comes over the back of that boat? Uh, I know you've experienced it. You've had a personal experience out of that. I have a couple of personal experiences at it. And it's so quick in the blink of an eye. You're dry in the blink of an eye. You're, <laughs> you're soaking wet and freezing because now the water's evaporating and uh, it's giving that cooling sensation all over your body. So it's, it's really uh, an unusual thing. When you, uh, I, I know that you have an experience. And did you get totally soaked when they backed down? You know what? I did. I got totally soaked when I was fishing the ladies' tournament in Costa Rica. And uh, I knew I was in trouble when the captain asked me if I had an extra <laughs> set of clothes. And I just actually, uh, as they started backing down on that fish and the waves of water started coming over the back of the boat, it was kind of funny because the, the mate picked up a hose and he said, hey, the captain missed a spot and then just totally soaked the back of me. Oh. So it was, uh, I was totally soaked during that event. Wow. Um, and that was, it was a great experience. You know, you wonder, like I saw some footage from the Buccaneer Cup even here in Palm Beach and, and the, some of these cockpits were so full that buckets and things were floating around in the back yeah. and the guys were actually trying to grab the buckets and keep them from hitting the anglers that were you know stand up fighting these sailfish and it's amazing I, I always wonder how do these boats not sink when that that much weight in that short period of time of water it's um, they have an inner hole and a lot of, a lot, I don't know, if, I know they used to, I don't know, if, I haven't been in around the boat builders in many, many years. I used to work <clears throat> with some boat builders around Miami, Bertram Yacht, um, this first one that comes to mind, a couple of major boat manufacturers. I used, I was representing 3M Company, and um, 
we sold them different things that they used in the manufacture of the boats. One of, one or two of them, I don't recall, Mako was another one that we worked with. Uh, they would fill <clears throat> the hulls, the inside of the hulls, with foam so they would become even more buoyant. And then they have an inner hull and an outer hull. So all that water that, that comes in that you see floating around goes right back out again. It doesn't go down into the boat. It goes right, you know, in most cases, it goes right back out again. Um, so it's, it's kind of an illusion in, in a way, but... Um, I understand what you're saying with all that weight. There is a tremendous amount of water that comes over. I can't imagine how many gallons it might be, but I'm sure it's probably a couple hundred that come over. And if you figure every gallon weighs seven or eight pounds for every gallon, so that's an immediate burst of weight into the boat. And then, you know, if it's if it's done right, it just gradually goes back out again. It's a unique question. It is. I wonder if the boat actually begins to sink in the water for a brief period of time when that occurs. That's a, that's kind of interesting. Well, you know, I've seen a couple of um, video footage clips also out in New Mexico where some of these boats have backed down on Black Marlin. There was one in particular, and that boat actually ended up sinking. They backed down so hard on it that the footage is Too from quickly. another boat where the stern started going under the water. Holy the smokes. fish was still jumping as this boat was sinking. And then the last photos you see was just the uh, bow of the boat out and, and them going to get rescued. But they were actively fighting a black marlin while the boat was sinking and starting to, to go under Commitment. the water. Commitment. It's pretty, uh, a pretty amazing footage if you, if you look on it. Your listeners look uh, it up on the Internet. That is a committed fisher person there, angler. <laughs> uh, boat right, sinking. I don't to, know. I don't know. To, I'm hooked. You I'm... have to think. <laughs> Fish on. We're sinking. Fish on. <laughs> the picture is amazing, Rascalo. You see the back of the boat oh, under my the water and the fish jumping. Oh, my gosh. I I, I would like to uh, put a link of, of that, if you can, up on the, uh, on the Facebook page. While, while we're talking about Facebook, you can go to Facebook, and you can hear us on Facebook. And that's easy to do. Just go to Facebook, find Fishing in Florida Show. Click on Contact Us. And you can hear us there. You can go to our, our mothership, as I refer to it, which is www.wcetfm.com. That's our home base. You can go there, and, and uh, you can find us there. And the new affiliate. Um, the new affiliate is uh, YachtRockMiami.com. Um, you go to YachtRockMiami.com, and you can listen to us there as well. Um, a lot of new ways. That we're, we're, I'm working on a, an application that is nothing more than the ability to listen to the show on the app. It doesn't have a lot of... A lot of stuff like uh, the other app that we were on. Um, it's just going to be a simple app, very straightforward. You just turn the app on and you listen to the show. You listen to the particular network that we're on. Uh, so I'm working on that. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll have that available for the listeners. Another way, just an easy way to listen to us. If you have a, um, a phone that uh, has unlimited time, you can actually call, call in to listen. You won't be able to get into the board, but you can actually listen. Uh, 701 719-9704. Again, just different ways, trying to make it as easy as we can for those of you who wish to join in on the fun Sunday mornings. Um, and to me, it's it's an enjoyable experience because we're constantly talking about one of the things that in my lifetime, I really believe was part of the glue, if you will, that helped our family stay together. And that was the ability to go fishing. My mom loved fishing. Uh, and as a result of that, we went fishing three, four times a month. It wasn't uh, uncommon for us to do that. And a lot of times I would take my friends. And one of the friends that I had that I'm still in contact with, he, he mentioned to me uh, the last time that I spoke to him, we got to talking about fishing. He goes, you know, I still remember how your dad would take us fishing over the weekend, take the whole family, and he'd take me with you, and we'd go fishing. Uh, really made some lifelong memories. And that's what I'm hoping this show will help other people to realize that there, there's stuff that we can do out there on the water because we're surrounded by water everywhere that is enjoyable. It is lifelong memories for you and your kids. Um, again, for me, it was a vital part. Um, growing up for you, Carolyn, were you a, an angler growing up as well? As a matter of fact, I was. I grew up in Connecticut, um, probably at the age of six or seven. My dad put a little fishing rod in my hand. We'd go down to the little docks up there in New England, and we'd uh, we'd put little crab traps out. He'd teach me how to uh, snag bunker in a little uh, canal, <laughs> how to clean itty-bitty little eight-inch eight, eight inch long bluefish that gave you one fillet that was about the size of a post-it note. Um, you know, we were always hanging out uh, trying to catch uh, crabs off the pilings with, with nets. So, uh, yeah, fishing was a real big a big part of our family as well. I remember when I was a little girl, my dad sent me into the U.S. Coast Guard 
a class for operating boats, so we did a safe boaters course. Um, I found my certificate not long ago. It was 1972 or something like that. So uh, <laughs> so we were always out on the water, and we had a, a 32-foot wood lures boat that oh, we used wow. to go across to Long Island and, and fish for stripers in a place called The Race. And I wish I was an adult now in doing that because I would be able to really effectively catch fish. I don't remember it much, but always had a fishing rod in my hand. It's uh, again, it's a an activity that if you're all doing it, if you're all in, it, this has been my experience. If you, if all of you are having the same activity at the same time, you're you're seeing different views of that activity, <clears throat> and later on, it gives you something that I don't see a whole lot going on anymore about, and that's having a discussion. We would. Many times we would go fishing. If we didn't catch any fish, my dad sometimes would break down and buy something at a fast food restaurant. But usually if we didn't catch any fish, we didn't, we didn't eat. And, and it was rare that we didn't catch fish. So we would typically catch fish and we would cook the fish. You know, I would catch them. My mom would catch them. My brother would scale them. I would clean them. My dad would cook them. So everybody was involved. And I, I, at the time, I always, you know, I kind of thought, well, I don't want to clean the fish. What a pain, you know. Let dad clean the fish. But I, I understand now the purpose of that was to have everybody do their little thing. And as a result of that, you feel like you're, it, it, again, it's the glue. I just kind of go back to the word glue. It was the glue that, that kind of built our families together. And that's what I'd like to do for those out there who are, it could be single parent, it could be, you know, two parents, but to give them an option to put down the technology, as Robert says, put down the, the, the uh, Xboxes and pick up the tackle boxes. And enjoy it. It's lifelong memories. It's it's for me in my particular experience. It's very soothing. It's very, very relaxing. You, I, I know on days like four to six foot swells, and that's the different story. But typically, when I would go fishing, it would be two feet or less. I didn't like, I didn't like fighting it, and it was very relaxing. When you're out there like that, uh, Carolyn, and it's it's not really. I mean, you're not fighting the waves. Do you find it that it's relaxing? It's very soothing to the, to the spirit, if you will. Oh, it's absolutely soothing. You're getting the salt air in your lungs, which is so beneficial health-wise. You're, you're seeing activity and wildlife. Uh, you could see anything, you, uh, birds, dolphin, even out here on the coast. Uh, you occasionally see some breaching whales. Uh, you know, it's just, it's amazing. Uh, listen to a little bit of music, you know, bring out some mm, lunch. Yeah. It's a really nice all-day event. And, and, you know, at this time of year when it's high 70s, and beautiful sun. It's it's a great time to get out there. You're not too hot. You're not too cold. Bring an extra jacket. But just going out there and you know seeing all, so many other people enjoying and, and people picnicking on the beach when you come in the inlet. It's it's a really nice event. And you know I mean I, I there's no paper routes down here in Florida, but I remember I had a paper route in Connecticut uh, just so I could go buy 25 cent shiners and you know go take my <laughs> little uh, pink fishing rod to the docks. So oh you know God. it's a really inexpensive sport that yep. uh, folks can get involved in too. It's a little fishing rod and get some uh, inexpensive bait in any grocery store and you're good to go. You you uh, really have clicked on some memories of mine. I was the first thing, my first job I ever had was a paper boy. I had 37 uh, papers to deliver. And uh, yeah, that's how I made money. <laughs> well, Forgotten about story, that completely. You had to be- yeah, funny story. You had to be eight years old to have a paper route in Connecticut, and I was seven. And I, I told a white lie, and I actually got the paper route at seven. Well, I think so, I was uh, nine or ten. Uh, and we, we collected. Oh, oh, my gosh, that brings back memories. All right, so let me go on to uh, – let me get on to the radar, because the radar, according to the radar that I'm looking at here, we have little to none happening over Florida. There's a disturbed area of weather over Louisiana, but that's far away from us. And there's a little bit of weather going on down uh, south in the Keys, but it's probably 100 miles or so offshore, 50, 70 miles offshore, somewhere in there. It's not anywhere near shore. Uh, Other than that, we have a clear, crisp, beautiful day ahead of us. It's supposed to get up into the 70s today, which would make it a very, very nice day. Uh, Right now, the surf conditions at the beaches, they're three to four foot swells. They just be aware here in around areas in the Palm Beach, there may be a slight uh, rip current. Know how to identify a whip, a rip current. Uh, just look at the waves coming in. That water's got to go back out somewhere. If you look carefully, you'll see the water's going back out in a particular area. Don't go in that area. Stay away from it. God forbid you get caught in it. Don't fight it. Swim parallel to the shore, and then you'll see that you get out of it and you can come back. Uh, it's going to be mostly sunny today. Um, again, just be aware of slight rip currents because of the conditions. Other than that, right now, current conditions are, looks like to be uh, about 52 degrees here in West Palm Beach 
it's supposed to get up to about 73. I think it's getting a little warmer than that. Uh, and then we'll be down around 52 tonight. As the week goes on coming up this next week, it'll be warm uh, tomorrow. And then really nice days coming up. Tuesday, the high is 75. Wednesday, back up to 79. Uh, Thursday, 76. Friday, 76. Oh, my goodness. These, this is the week that we have been waiting for, South Florida. <laughs> This is the week that has been hiding from us. Get out there and enjoy. You got anything planned for this week, Carolyn? As a matter of fact, I do. There's a, a little local tournament coming up. The Offshore Angler Pompano Beach uh, Club has uh, February 1 a sailfish tournament, and I was asked to guest uh, fish on a 48-foot Buddy Davis. They needed a lady angler on board, so we'll be out uh, with four dozen goggle eyes next Ooh. Saturday. Uh, Looking to catch some sailfish, uh, probably fishing kind of up in your area, Boynton Beach. Oh man! Um, but it'll be a good a good time. Uh, uh, I think actually Carol Strickland's going to come and, and angle with us, and Hot dog. Uh, we'll get out there and, and meet some new people. That's the great thing about fishing. You're, I don't know anyone on the boat. We'll we'll end up meeting them all. Isn't that neat? I, I like that idea. It's a, it's a it's a really neat community uh, when you get excuse the pun hooked up with people. <laughs> um, it really is. People, you know, I think of. Um, Oh, her mind, her, her her name slips my mind, but she had uh, fishwithme.net. That was, a, I thought that was a fantastic idea where uh, if you have a boat and you need somebody to go fishing with you, you, you put up on this, this board, you know, I have this boat and, and I'm looking for somebody to go fishing with me. If you can, you know, help me out with the gas or whatever, a couple hundred bucks or a hundred bucks or whatever that might be. And then if you have no boat, but you have somebody that uh, has a boat that, that you want to go fishing with, it was a great exchange back and forth. I thought it was really cool. I don't know if they're still going or not, but it was fishwithme.net. You could go there and find, uh, if you're an angler, find somebody to go fishing with. If you're a boat or find an angler to go fishing with um i don't know hopefully they're still open but anyway that's just an idea that came to mind while we were talking about it oh that's a that's a great idea and i i just looked them up they're still on the internet as well but you know so many times for the either the tournaments which i love being a guest angler on uh to you know promote the obviously you know the breast cancer and uh things like that but i love getting out and meet new people and the great thing about the fishing community is you, you get welcomed open arms on any boat you go, at any tournament event you go to. Any event usually has children uh, activities, adult activities, contests, games, little beer, um, you know, and, and you get to see the weigh-ins and everybody's excitement and the camaraderie of a team backing in and, and offloading their fish for a weigh-in. It's just such a great family environment. Cool. And to be welcomed on any boat you go, it's just, it's just outstanding. It's a great group of people to be around. Well, I don't know what happened. I'm missing Robert this morning. I hope everything is okay over there. Maybe the dogs got out. Uh, he's usually called in by now, so well, I'll find out. I'll have, I'll have him uh, check in with me later. But usually we have Robert with uh, Florida Fisherman Magazine. He's on to giving us uh, fishing reports right about this time. And I uh, don't know if he did any fishing this last week. Uh, it was blowing quite a bit this last week still i mean uh, it seems like i don't know maybe it's just my imagination but it seems like with windy more than normal is am i imagining that or do you agree i agree 100 percent. the wind was out of the northwest which kind of kept it a little colder down here in deerfield uh but uh, i just look out the window and see the the uh, flags going and and uh, i was checking for fronts i didn't really see anything coming through and it's just uh, you know an unusual situation uh even checked in with my girlfriend who fishes out of venice louisiana she's a lady angler up there with a uh, rod and reel girl is kind of her tagline up there and and it was even had a lot of blowing out that way and she does the backcountry redfish and uh, you know, the trout and things back in the bayou. But, uh, yeah, and I think the wind is laying down today because it looks like seas are less than two two feet today. Yeah, and I, uh, well, according to the beach now, maybe to get a little little higher at the beach, but according to the beach report, a little more than that. But even at that, that's, uh, that's a beautiful day for me to go out. Oh, my gosh, two feet or less. And I have been out on the ocean 20 miles offshore where you feel like you're in a, just a puddle. It's just as, as calm as you can imagine. And uh, glass, uh, the reflection is unbelievable. Um, so that, those are my ideal fishing conditions. I, I, I never really, I mean, I've been out there when it was four to six foot swells. It was more work than it was enjoyable. Um, I like the nice, calm, flat seas. And you get to see a lot more, too. Um, it, it seems to me that it's, uh, versus the waves, it is a far more soothing effect 
um, versus being in like a four, four, three to four foot, even a three to four foot swell. In my little boat, I only had a 24 foot boat. Even three to four foot swells would, would drive us crazy. So we'd like to go out there. And on the days like that, this last week where it was blowing like crazy, we'd just go out in the backwater and enjoy the backwater. There was always something we could do uh, on the water. And, and if it was, you know, for whatever reason we didn't want to take the boat, there's plenty of places you can fish from the shore, uh, especially down in the Keys. I lived in South Florida, uh, South Miami, for a number of years. Oh, my gosh. Um and so the keys were just literally a hop, skip, and a jump away. And within a half hour, 45 minutes, we were down Key Largo. Uh, and one of the, my favorite places, I don't know why they shut it down, uh, Card Sound Bridge. Did you ever fish Card Sound Bridge? No, I didn't. But I used to go that route when I was uh, rolling down to Ocean Reef. And that was a great bri- uh, bridge area and the little parks that were off the pull-off areas on the road that you can park and fish. Uh, but that was a you know outstanding, great place to go. The water moved through there. The the uh, channel that uh, goes underneath there. It's just a uh, you know great activity. Um, I'm thinking what down down there. Uh, we even you know we even caught some small dolphin, which are funny because they're so little. You look at it and you're <laughs> like, is, is, is this a, a juvenile? Yeah. Is it really a dolphin? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. And um, you know anywhere in that back country down there. I mean you always see the little flats boats, people with their little skiffs and. Uh, and even just looking at the lot, the wildlife back there, Riscala is pretty amazing. You'll have the herons, the yeah. cranes, and yeah. and uh, things you you don't really expect. A couple lures hanging from you know people's <laughs> trees that they lost, which yeah. uh, I probably That's left common. You there. That's common. All right. Well, don't go away. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show this morning with Carolyn and Riscala. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Rascala Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. While other stations just talk a good game, we win it. Hey, sounds like somebody's having a lot of fun. Want to give your pet the celebrity treatment? Have you heard of Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care in Royal Palm Beach? They're located just off State Road 7 and have been servicing the area for 14 years. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care is the home of the Blueberry Facial, also specializing in tartar removal with eight years of assisting in dental procedures. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care? They're more than just about dogs. They are the only experienced cat groomer in the area. They also cater to all breeds and sizes and open six days a week. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care, located just north of the Super Walmart in Royal Palm Beach. You can find them at 250 Business Parkway. They specialize in shampoos with no extra charge. Flea and tick dips also available. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care. You can give them a call at 561-793-9992. They also provide gift certificates for those looking for that special present. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care, 561-793-9992. They're located in Royal Palm Beach. That number, 561-793-9992. Call for your appointment today, 561-793-9992. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care, where your pet gets celebrity treatment. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packer, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com for all your toner needs. All toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner call or email us today do you have an unusual pet did you know that the rainforest clinic in loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets they see pets that other vets don't parrots and chickens ducks geese turtles snakes goats pigs lizards and even monkeys are you a beekeeper dr club the first of her kind in the area yes she takes care of bees as well Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. 
That's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Whitting. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped, even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. All I grab a fishing pole and cast it in the water. I fish until dark. Oh my, I caught a shark. I'm fishing and blowing on. When the sun shines all day. Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. Good morning to you. If you're just waking up, it's still a little bit on the chilly side out there. Uh, I woke up this morning at to 47 degrees. That's what they tell me anyway. I was freezing. Every, <laughs> there wasn't a part of my body that wasn't cold when I first walked out this morning. It took me a couple of seconds to uh, kind of acclimate to it. But it is going to be a warm day. We're going to be in the 70s before it's all over. So get out there and do something. Enjoy who you have in your life. Enjoy the surroundings that we have. We have water three times. Uh, sides of the state we have thousands and thousands of of lakes and canals and water for me is like uh (laughs) second nature it is one of those things that uh that i just can't get enough of radar report shows little to no activity with regard to uh uh storms or or or, uh thunderstorms of that nature uh Parks and Recreation uh, reports of mild uh, beach uh, conditions out there. We're looking at uh, three to four foot sometimes. A slight um, undertow. Just be aware of what's going on. Remember, some of our beaches here in Palm Beach, uh, we have rocks. So just be aware of that. Right now, current conditions, they're telling me that they're approximately 52 degrees. So we are warming up pretty quickly. And I would say within the next hour or so, we'll probably jump another five or six degrees. So it's going to be a beautiful day. Get out there and enjoy it. This morning, I have Carolyn with Atlas Tracks uh, as my co-host. Thank you, Carolyn, for taking the time to call in. You really do a good job. I really want to commend you on that. I appreciate you uh, very much. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. I, I can't think of anything else that I'd love to do more this morning, especially since it's so chilly outside. Uh, <laughs> I know what you mean. I went out bare feet to pick up my little dog, and uh, I, it was so cold on my bare feet. It was like walking on coals. I was doing the ouch, 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 and yeah. ran back inside. So uh, absolutely, thanks for having me. And again, we, I want to thank YachtRockMiami.com, our latest new affiliate out of, uh, out of Miami. Smooth grooves all day long, all night strong. Uh, Yacht Rock, thank you. They are carrying the show for us. Greatly appreciated. Thanks to High Point Radio. Thanks to uh, KYH out of uh, Utah. Thanks to WCET for carrying the show. All right, let me get on to uh, my next guest, who is Rachel Covello. Rachel is with FishmongerApproved.com. And uh, I really enjoy having her on because she has her and Margaret, I think it is. Is it Margaret, Rachel? Am I right? Right. Yeah, Margaret's the fishmonger. Yeah. The uh, her, her and Margaret have a, a fantastic imagination on cooking. They just, it's something for me that I don't, I'm not there like them. And I enjoy having them on because they give me all kinds of ideas about how to do things. So good morning, ladies, and welcome aboard. Good morning. Go ahead, Carolyn. Oh, good morning. How are you, ladies? Good morning. How are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, you guys are Good, a little, I, you're a little weak on uh, on your side there, uh, uh, Rachel. Can you get a little closer to the mic? Yeah, I'm, I'm. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, you're kind of fading in and out. I'm. Are you moving around? 
No, nope, we're sitting still. I'm, I can huh. call back in if it would be easier. Would love to. No, I think we might be able to make it. We, we, we might be able to make it work. So, uh, how how are the ladies doing this morning? We're doing good. Is it cold it's where little, you're? It's a little chilly yeah. down here too. I think it was in the fifties down here in St. Pete. So you are on the west coast. Is that correct? Yes, we are in West Central Florida. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it was a bit on the chilly side here as well. So this morning, we, um, you know, with this cold weather, we like to talk about comfort food. <laughs> so what can you tell us about comfort food? Um, well, we are, uh, This obviously, this is the last week. It was chilly down here. I don't know how cold it was up there, but it was about, um, what was it, like in the 30s, 30s? Oh, we had a couple of, yeah, (laughs) we had a couple of days that were really, really cool. Yep. Yes. And so it it makes, it puts me in the mood. I I always get in the mood for like, you know, I'm always in that tomato soup, grilled cheese type of mood or a nice chowder or those types of warm comfort foods. Um, I go into like little hibernation mode, I guess, and just want to stay at home and eat good, good warm food. So (laughs) I, I task Margaret in those days to put together something for me, for comfort, using seafood, because obviously our, our niche is seafood. We're at the Florida Seafood Magazine. So she's put together several recipes now. Um, you know, we're hoping by the end of the year we have a good cook, cookbook to come out. But oh, cool. we have a whole bunch of recipes for chowder, and we have a, a tuna tuna mount with, with a pear and lots of comfort stuff. So I'll let Margaret talk about how she comes up with these amazing recipes, because they are so, so good. Cool. Yeah, she's talking about this tuna melt we put together, and it's actually, it's got a nice soup that goes along with it. That recipe's on our web our website as well, fishmongerapproved.com. Um, but last week, it's stone crab season, <clears throat> excuse me, in the state of Florida. Obviously, it's, um, you know, here we've got a really good supply of stone crabs. So um, I just off the, you know, cough came up with a uh, quiche recipe that includes a Florida stone crab and then also um, sea scallops, which is, you know. Uh, my mouth is watering. <laughs> <laughs> if you go out on our oh. web page, you see the picture of it. We actually did, uh, we took tips <clears throat> of the claws and left the, uh, the shell piece on and stuck it around the, the outside of the top. So it made it a really nice presentation. Wow. So that, that, that went, we made two quiche and it was gone within the day. <laughs> I, I think I ate them both in two days. Well, I, I have to tell you, girls, I was on your website earlier, and anything that looks like pie, I'm in. So nothing better than a, a, dessert, than a, a stone crab a quiche that I see in scallop quiche on oh. your on your uh, website. And uh, I see some martini glasses. I like anything in a martini glass. So so that looks pretty delicious. Yeah, that's a gazpacho soup. That's a, uh, you know, obviously it's a cold soup, but um, with the gazpacho, the traditional way to make it is with bread, and I decided I didn't want to do that, so I, I used garbanzo beans instead, and, um, you know, just pureed those as well inside of the uh, soup, but... I still put it on bread, though. I, I like it. the bread. <laughs> bread, too. <laughs> Use bread toast chips with that. Um, and today, we were lucky enough to, um, uh, one of the local suppliers of oysters had dropped off 50 oysters for us, so today I'm experimenting with those. I'm probably going to make a chowder and then um, fire up the grill and throw a few of those outside on, on, mm. the, on the grill and see what happens to those. Yum, so. yum. Well, if you yeah, want to let us know where the experimental kitchen is, we're happy to come over. <laughs> <laughs> Head over to South St. Pete. We've got a nice big backyard. You can have a nice, and Margaret also, not only is she a seafood expert, but she's a very handy around the house. She built me a table outside that seats about 14. So come on over. Oh, my we'll goodness. A nice that's a serious, yeah. It's a, it's a great table. Oh, my. That's that's a serious meal there now. That reminds me of, it is. <laughs> you know, I... Uh, I'm I'm a Middle Eastern background, and and in in my back, kind of like the Italians and the Cubans as well. Everything's around food. Oh my gosh, are you coming over? Let me sit you down a bite to eat. They filled the whole table up with food. Oh, it's just a bite. It's just <laughs> that's what that reminds yeah. me of. A table of seat fourteen. Oh my gosh, that's a tremendous meal there. I, well, I, I, <laughs> I said I need a table that's going to be durable because we get sun all day long in our backyard. I was like, I need a table. So she literally used decking material to build this giant table. It's awesome. But there's plenty of room now for, for a feast. Um, but one of the other things that she made not too long ago, we actually participated in a chowder competition out here in St. Pete, mm. on St. Pete Beach. 
Um, we did a, you did a red, white, it was a red, white, and blue mm-hmm. theme. So yeah, she did blue, I think she had blue crab, red roasted peppers, and Clam. clam. Oh. Um, and it was, and the cheese, uh, the cheese she used was just perfect. I think she used a gouda or something like yeah. that. And then she made her own. Margaret used to own. Um, her, she had she had another company called St. Pete Heat, and she used to make hot pepper sauces. So she made homemade this homemade blueberry hot sauce that's incredible. And wow. she, she puts just a drop on top of the chowder. And I, wow. I never need to go out to eat. <laughs> um. See, when I mentioned earlier, the reason, one of the reasons I enjoy having you on is your imagination with regard to different dishes and how to make them uh, far exceeds anything I can come up with. What you just said, I would have never thought of blueberry hot sauce. I would have, that would never have come to my mind. Now you, you mentioned, I'm thinking, I'd like to try that. <laughs> we'll, ship, we'll ship you a bottle. We still have one? I think we still have one. We'll ship you over a bottle so you can taste oh it. Oh, my gosh. That, but, but again, my point being is that this is why I enjoy having you on, because you introduce you. things that I would never, ever have thought of. Carolyn, just out of curiosity, blueberry hot sauce, did, would you have thought of that? I would not have thought about it, but I'm it sounds you. delicious. I'm and I can only you. imagine uh, what it would taste like on a nice white piece of fish or oh. even, you know what, even in some oysters. Yeah. It sounds delicious. Yeah. 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 Wow. And you know, it's, it's, yeah, it adds, it's funny. It adds a, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, it's funny, um, I have a little lady fishing team, and I actually posted a recipe contest that we're going to pick a, 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 give us your favorite fish recipe. Um, so now I'm thinking, gee, I might have to, you know, borrow one of yours and post it on my own site. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they got a bunch, I'll tell you what. There's a whole bunch of stuff they have on their site. It's just amazing, the amount of information, the ideas. That's what I like the most is the, just, I don't know where they come up with it. It's, it's kind of like a musician. Where do they come up with the music? It's there in their mind somewhere. Somehow they receive it. These, these two ladies are like that. The ideas That's come to them. And, oh, yeah, let's try this. Let's try that. And then before you know it, oh, gee whiz. So, yeah, that's, uh, again, the, the reason I like having you guys is because of the imagination there, uh, something I would <laughs> never have Wait. thought of. We also did, um, yesterday we did a, I wanted something, a, I like, I love Asian food. I like anything from that, that whole area of the of the world. Mm-hmm. And so she made a, um, and usually what happens is Margaret will say, well, I need to come up with a recipe. This is the seafood that we have in the fridge. <laughs> we have <some laughs> well, yeah, that's seeds, good. That's or logic. We have like a grouper or we have a clam or an oyster. And I'll say, well, I'm kind of in a mood for this type of food. So she'll create like a modern version of that. And then I might just come back and say, hey, what if we put it in this? Or like, because we did this shrimp fried rice, Shezwan um, shrimp fried rice yesterday, and we actually served it. I said, well, why don't we serve it in like a half, add some pineapple and serve it in a half of pineapple wow. um, shell. And that's what ah. we did. And it was beautiful. We did it for a local foodie podcast out this way. Wow. Did you take pictures of that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we oh, did. Would you uh, post? I do. But- Post a picture on our Facebook page, the Fishing in Florida show. Post a picture of that. That, that, that sounds amazing. Yeah, I will. And and I do the photography, so it's a fun match between the two of us. She makes pretty food, and I can take pictures of it. So I'll post <laughs> and that eat it. You. And eat it. Come on, Rachel. Yeah, I'll get to eat it. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> you, know, you know what else I love about your website? Not only do you have recipes, but you've got um, directories for boating and your favorite condiments and some cookbooks and uh, – you know, where to get some equipment. So you really have a full service, you know, website and, you know, the photos of, of the foods and the recipes, what they look like, what they should look like when you're done making them. That's cool. That's a yeah. really, that's a fun website to go to. Can you tell our guests what, what, what the website is? Yeah, it's fishmongerapproved.com. Um, and we have, a obviously, the website. We have social media. And we're always looking for feedback. You know, we're in St. Pete, but we cover all of Florida. So if people have a favorite you know, bait and tackle shop or a seafood um, restaurant or a, um, a uh, seafood market, please let us know. We're always looking for that. We, we did just roll out a, and I think we talked about it a little bit last time, Rascala, but we did roll out a fishmonger approved restaurant evaluation program. Yeah, I heard you talking. I remember we, you talking about that. Yeah, yeah, where we have restaurants who say that they're interested in becoming fishmonger approved. They answer a few questions for us. We either do a tasting or we can send one of you out on the other side of the state. To yum, yum. Tasting. And then it's, and it's, as long as it's a quality seafood and it's fresh and doesn't always have to be local, but as long as it's quality and tastes fresh, um, we give them a fishmonger approved certification and we put them on our website for a year at no cost to them. So um, keep that in mind if, if there's any restaurants out there that are, are worth a visit or, or worth a phone call. 
That is an excellent idea. I like that. Years ago, we used to have, um, what was that called? Um, in, I think it was called information. You dialed 411 or something, and you get information, and they would tell you, you know, <laughs> you know this is kind of like We're that. We're laughing, Rachel. <clears throat> this is, huh? <laughs> Well, I think I think part of the reason we do this is there is, and I was talking to a seafood supplier the other day about this. There is no standards out there for quality seafood restaurants. You know, we we unfortunately in Florida we tend to catch a lot of great fish, we ship it out, and then we bring in frozen fish or fish from other suppliers. And so the idea is really to educate consumers more on when you go out to this, you know, X Y Z restaurant, you're going to get good quality fish that much of it's lo- local or fresh or, or whatever. So. Yeah, I think it's a great a idea. I really do. Yeah. And, and, and I know you guys are laughing at me. I'm really re- <laughs> revealing my age, but there was, I mean, we used to be able to call, was it 411? I haven't done it in so long. I don't, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> so this is kind of sort of, it still works. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of sort of like that, <laughs> except that you don't have to dial 411. You just go to fishmongerapproved.com and you can, hopefully you'll find a, the restaurant in your area um, that they've, kind of checked out for you already so the odds of you being disappointed are extremely low um i love it i think it's a fantastic idea so if any of you out there have a favorite place uh maybe you want to sub- submit that to them you go to uh fishmongerapproved.com um leave a message for and Rachel they can also Margaret. email they can also email info at fishmongerapproved.com um or Rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L, at fishmongerapproved.com and send that information over. Like I said, that part of our website, we're still building. We just have a handful of restaurants now, but we really want to make that um, a, like a robust platform with a lot of information. Um, same with any of the, the shops and retail stores. We're trying to add a lot more to that. So right now you'll see those pages are a little sparse, but we need some help in getting the word out and, and bringing more uh, information to our platform from people all across the state. I love it when people join in. You know, they become, I like to say, it's kind of like you've got some skin in the game. You're part of it. You become part of, you know, yes, I, I <laughs> sent this name in to fishmonger.com and they did approve it, you know. It, you, you played a little yeah. part of that. that, that so I, I like that kind of stuff. I'm always for things where everybody benefits. And what we're talking about now is things that everybody benefits. You benefit. The, yeah. the listeners benefit. The people who want to go to a restaurant benefit. The restaurant benefits. It, that's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. And lucky, lucky for me, two of your restaurants on there are in my local town. Woo. Nice. Where are you based? I'm out of Deerfield Beach, so you've got the Rusty Hook Tavern in Pompano I see on your yes. listing and the new beach house. Yeah, Rusty Hook is awesome. Um, I I was out there visiting some friends. I do some travel blogging, too, and I was out there visiting some friends who own a hotel out there, and I said, I need seafood while I'm here, and I went to Beach House, which was a little bit more of that elegant feel, that just, you know, really beautiful um, restaurant that has great seafood, and then I went over to Rusty Hook, and that place is just, it's right on the canal. I like the canal setting that you have there and the seafood. I mean, it's one of the few places that you can just get a really good whole fish. Mm. Um, and so we, we loved it, or I loved it. Margaret wasn't with me, so I, I sent back the fishmonger wife approved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Well, ladies, we're, we're running out of time. That's what happens when we're having a good time. It just flies by. I, I want to take the opportunity again to thank you for taking the time to call in. I'm going to give Carolyn an opportunity to say goodbye, and then we'll go to a break. But before I do that, I want to give you an opportunity to get the information out to the listeners. How do they get a hold of you? Uh, what platforms are you on? And I'll be looking forward to uh, hearing some updates from you here in the future. Um, so uh, you go ahead, and then we'll let Carolyn say goodbye to you. Sounds like a plan. By the way, I'm going to call 411 when we get off this phone call. It's um, <laughs> um, it, it, this, like, again, uh, Fishmonger Approved. Put that D on the end of fishmongerapproved.com. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're going to be building a little bit out more on Twitter. We're not too much on there yet, but um, you can email us at info at fishmongerapproved.com and tell us. Give us any feedback. You can also reach us right through the website, too. So, yep. And our, our phone number is 813-618-FISH. You need to give us a call. Okay, say that again. Eight, repeat the phone number again. Eight one, it, yeah, it's 813-618 and then the word FISH, F-I-S-H. Okay. All right, Carolyn, go ahead. 
Absolutely, Rachel and Margaret. It was great talking with you girls. I plan on making that quiche, the scallop uh, mm-hmm. and lobster uh, quiche, yum, yum. Uh, crab, a stone crab quiche right away. So um, looking forward to your website and uh, your directories growing so we can try some of these restaurants. Awesome. Thank All you. All right. Very Wish nice you an awesome day, ladies. Well. Here we go. All right. Have a good one. Full of special moments. A cruise! Right! Unexpected moments. I got this. And even awkward moments. Okay, Dad, thank you. <laughs> but every moment you spend with your kids, <laughs> even the smallest moments, <laughs> can make the biggest impact on your child's life. So take a moment to be a dad today. Do you own a laser printer, copier, or a fax? Well then, listen close to this announcement. Laser Technologies has been providing high-quality, frustration-free toner cartridges that are guaranteed not to harm your equipment for over 20 years. Laser Technologies will save you on your supplies with high-quality and fast delivery. Savings up to 50%. Laser Technologies supplies toner, imaging drums, developer and cartridges for most of the major brands. For a price quote, send an email to service at laser-technologies.com. Include your printer make and model for your part number. Call us at 561-792-9600. That's 561-792-9600. Laser Technologies, providing 100% of the quality at a fraction of the price. 561-792-9600. Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Whitting. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped. Even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. Want to give your pet the celebrity treatment? Have you heard of Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care in Royal Palm Beach? They're located just off State Road 7 and have been servicing the area for 14 years. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care is the home of the Blueberry Facial, also specializing in tartar removal with eight years of assisting in dental procedures. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care? They're more than just about dogs. They are the only experienced cat groomer in the area. They also cater to all breeds and sizes and open six days a week. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care, located just north of the Super Walmart in Royal Palm Beach. You can find them at 250 Business Parkway. They specialize in shampoos with no extra charge. Flea and tick dips also available. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care. You can give them a call at 561-793-9992. They also provide gift certificates for those looking for that special present. Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care. 561-793-9992. While other stations just talk a good game, we win it. Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. Good morning to you if you're just joining us uh, and you've missed out on some of the fun. You can always catch up by finding our archives. Our archive link will be listed on Facebook 
You can find us on Facebook. Go to Fishing in Florida. Give us a like while you're on, uh, while you're there. Kind of makes us relevant in the searches, and uh, we'll have a link up more than likely before the uh, end of the day. Uh, there'll be a link up there, and you can tune in on whatever you missed. In the meantime, this morning I have the uh, pleasure of having Carolyn with Atlas Tracks with me. I like to uh, my my tagline for Carolyn: Protect what you love to the max. Call Carolyn at Atlas Tracks. And uh, we'll take a couple of minutes and we'll tell you about Atlas Tracks and what Atlas Tracks is and what Atlas Tracks can do. And some of the phenomenal things that Atlas Tracks has done. Um, so welcome back, Carolyn. And uh, what is Atlas Tracks? Well, um, thank you very much, Rascala. Atlas Tracks is a company I started about five years ago, a GPS tracking of assets and primarily in the boating business. So in South Florida, you cannot get insurance on your vessel without having a GPS tracker because, unfortunately, of the high theft. So we provide uh, asset recovery. Uh, Customers are able to know when their boat moves or any asset, whether it be a trailer or an ATV, uh, by getting email and text notifications every 10 minutes. So that way they can quickly uh, assess where the uh, the device is, uh, send out law enforcement, We also have boat alarms and trailer alarms, things that are affordable for everyone, where uh, if somebody's before they even move the asset, uh, they'll get a notice by siren uh, in in your driveway or by uh, text or emails. And even we're doing um, safety equipment. Um, We have satellite hotspots that you can take out on your boat or out in the backcountry or even out if you go out into the uh, sugarcane fields and do some uh, hunting. Uh, If you have a problem, you can hit an SOS button and and, uh, the location can be sent to your loved ones for uh, coming out and getting you, whether you break down in a car or an ATV or a vessel breaks down or a medical emergency. So we really are trying to round out our our fleet with uh, real good safety tracking products and, and just to make sure everyone's safe out on the water. That's a phenomenal product. Um, I want to ask you about the hotspots thing, because I think I know the answer, but I, I want to ask you so I'm, I'm sure. If I have one of these hotspot things, and I'm out of uh, cell range uh, for whatever reason, I can't use my cell phone. If I understand correctly, this thing allows you to use your cell phone. Is that right? Yes. So, uh, absolutely. I took mine out to Costa Rica for the ladies' Los Buenos Sailfish Tournament. And when you turn that device on and you have the application in your phone, you use your actual phone to make phone calls, to text, and you can also surf the, uh, the Internet. And why is that so important? People that rent satellite phones, none of their contact information is, is in that phone. So you have to now have a pad with, with all of the phone numbers, or you have to pre-type them in to a rental phone, and then you hand back that satellite phone at the end of the weekend. This uses your existing phone, and you can not only use your phone, you can hook up your laptop, you can hook up any kind of tablet. So it'll let you hook up to eight devices to that one little wow. hotspot offshore. Have, you have your own network uh, right there on Absolutely. the spot. Absolutely. Yep. And, You're and, making your own satellite network with your current Android and iPhone. Now, the advantage, and I know most people know this, but just in case they don't, the advantage of having a device like this is that there are literally no dead spots. I mean, there, there are dead spots, but there's so few and far between that you can be just about anywhere and almost always be in an area where there is no cell phone uh, coverage, but you have one of these and you instantly have uh, communication. So it's it's something that goes above and beyond uh, what Atlas Tracks, you know, the, the, the thing that I was introduced to Atlas Tracks about was the trackers. They have trackers as small as a, about the size of a business card, maybe a little thicker than a business card, but about that size. You could slip this thing in, in your back pocket. God forbid you go out on the water and um, I've, I've heard some nightmarish things that have happened. The last thing in the world they expected was a boat to sink. And the boat ended, ended up sinking, and they ended up having to swim miles back to shore. And one of the people didn't make it. If they had one of these with them, they could be instantly found. And they'd send out an SOS, and they'd be found within anywhere on the planet. You can be found within how many, how close, Carolyn? approximately four to five feet with accuracy. So you can actually, if someone's running a boat into a particular marina and your family logs on to see where you are and the route you took, they can actually see what dock's piling you're next to or what dock slip. 
And that's that's really that's important awesome. for the safety part. And, you know, a lot of fishermen, tournament fishermen, are using this, too, to go back and replay their trip of what they did for the day. Where good did point. they catch the bait? Yep. Uh, you know, how many miles did they do? How many hours did they run the boat? So there's more more data that we uh, put on our mapping and our uh, our system than just where is it right this moment. And as a matter of fact, I had some clients call today, this morning. They're doing some long uh, runs to the Bahamas. They said, hey, can you keep an eye on us? So I'm, I'm kind of doing a float plan for them, just like uh, air traffic controllers would do for aircraft. So I'll be able to see when they get over there, um, notify the family that they're over there okay. Again, because it was no cellular coverage, what happens? Family members call you over and over and over. Yeah, and they freak out. Go through or you don't pick it up, and yep. then they start panicking. Yeah, they so freak it, out. So it's a really good for safety and peace of mind. And, you know, even for me, I have a, I have a tracker on, on our boat. I know when the guys are coming in. I can get the grill turned on. I can get some of the food started to cook because I know how far away they are from the house. I think it's awesome. And, and again, um, you know, you this thing, she has different versions. The, my favorite version is the little portable one, the one that you can slip into your pocket because you can put it on a boat and you can slip it in your pocket. And what I found was really interesting, some of the things that Carolyn's doing, is you're tracking icebergs? <laughs> is that, is that what? Yes. We are tracking 150 icebergs in Greenland to see what the current – uh, current structure is for for research. Um, we uh, that's pretty exciting. We uh, uh, have uh, the same small mini tracks on sea buoys, and some of these buoys are for collecting water uh, and and samples. And if the buoys break free in Lake Michigan, they want to be able to go back and find their their buoys because all of that scientific equipment. Wow. Uh, we're working on projects for livestock right now, and again, using the small mini tracks, attaching it to livestock to be able to track that through transit. From, um, you know, across the country as it's being shipped. So there's uh, the boating just happens to be my passion and my love. And as people say, hey, can I put this on a hot air balloon? Sure. Absolutely. Now yeah. these high altitude hot air balloon guys that the ground crew can track them when they can't see them wow. because of the cloud cover. They go up to 14,000 feet. Wow. So, um, you know, there's a, there's some, if someone can vision it, you know, you know, snowmobiles, the snow groomers, aircraft, we're able to track altitude of aircraft. And why, why is the aircraft important? Well, the air traffic controllers can't see you below 1,000 feet. And if somebody has an issue with an aircraft and has to put it on a golf course or down on the beach, we can track these. We, they can self-track the, their loved one's aircraft and see, ooh, uh, 20 feet, and it looks like a golf course. Well, that's where they are. That You lose radar contact with the, with the main air traffic controllers. So some folks are starting to put it more in their the private jets, running uh, planes running back and forth to the Bahamas, too. It, it is a technology that I could see just a vast array of applications for, just so many. You mentioned the livestock. I wonder if there is – I'm just guessing. Uh, I wonder if there's a problem with horses because with the area that I live, there are some very expensive horses out here. I mean, to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars these horses are. Uh, I wonder if there's an, uh, a problem with horses missing. Uh, that would be another thing that, that you could put on, because you mentioned livestock. You could put one of these on one of the horses, and they're not very big, and they don't they weigh nothing, basically. Uh, and then, God forbid, if somebody takes that. That's why I like, uh, I like the tagline, protect what you love to the max. And you get a hold of Carolyn at Atlas Tracks, and she can explain it to you, how you can protect what you have to the max. Within, I, I like to say within 10 feet of anywhere on the planet. I guess we're getting better with the technology, because she's telling me almost half of that now. Um, so it is a phenomenal piece of technology. It is affordable. I mean, if you look at it in the sense of it is inexpensive insurance to have. I know people have cameras and they have uh, alarms and they have all these things. But when it's all is said and done, some of these people are so brazen. What you end up with is, you, well, you get to see who stole your stuff and the alarm went off, but that's about it. Now, if you have something like this uh, on your vehicle, whatever that might be, whether it's a snowmobile or a boat or an airplane for Pete's sake, um, you know where exactly where it's at. I'm amazed at the, the amount of information that is derived from this little piece of equipment. They can, um, Carolyn, correct me if I'm wrong, they can tell how fast you're going, they can tell your, um, your height, your, and they can tell um, if you're uh, on la- over land or, or not on land. It's, it's just so much information that is available. Um, sure. It is even the bearing, even the bearing. So if somebody's going, and I'll post some photos uh, up on the on the uh, Facebook page, but even the direction that the boat is going or the asset's going, and why is that important? 
because I'll tell you exact exact situation. We had a customer with an EPIRB that went off, and the Coast Guard was notified. The Coast Guard called the wife. The wife is panicking, thinking the boat's sinking. That's what an EPIRB is for. Turns out that they were just trolling in a tournament. There was a malfunction in the EPIRB. But because our maps connect the lines and show the way the boat's going and the, the speed between the 10-minute messages that it sends and the bearing, it was clearly he was trolling at 7 miles an hour. You could see his zigs and his zags. We sent that photo to the Coast Guard, and they didn't have to put the helicopter up. So it's very important information. And all of that is available to the customers. And I'll tell you what I'm very excited, and I, I forgot to tell you, is um, we've had so many inquiries. All of our trackers are satellite. So many people were asking me for um, trackers that can uh, manage their truck fleets for air conditioning businesses and electricians. Wow. We now have a cellular tracker that I have access to. And why that is, is good is it's affordable tracking for people that are not, never out of sa satellite range. So, you know, this way you get, they can tell when is the truck going to arrive at the customer for an air conditioning service call. Things like that, productivity, how many hours did the trucks run, do they need oil changes. So we're, we're branching off in uh, fleet <laughs> management, and I'm pretty excited that, that all happened yesterday. That so is we'll amazing. Have, we'll have a full price range for everybody. Wow. All right, well, we're up against a break, but i got to tell you, that, that really is awesome. I'm a, I'm a technology nut. I've been that way since I was a young child. It was introduced to walkie-talkies, which I thought was an AM radio at the time. It turned out to be a thing you talked into, and it just completely turned my life around and turned it into electronics. I've always been a, a lover of, of technology from the time, you know, of, of int being introduced to walkie-talkies until... You know, in 1985, I built my first computer. All technologies have always, you know, just something that's second nature to me almost. Uh, and this, what this does is it gives you a vast array of information, unlike anything else that's out there. All right, let me take a quick break. we uh, got to take a quickie, and then we'll be right back. Don't go away. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show. This morning, I have Carolyn with Atlas Tracks with me, and we'll have uh, Joe Hector coming up shortly. And he's going to tell us about... The extreme kayak, and oh my goodness, was it ever extreme. He's going to tell us about the extreme kayak fishing tournament that occurred last week. Here we go. Full of special moments. A cruise? Surprise! Unexpected moments. I got this. And even awkward moments. Okay, Dad, thank you. <laughs> but every moment you spend with your kids, <laughs> even the smallest moments, <laughs> can make the biggest impact on your child's life. So take a moment to be a dad today. <laughs> Do you have an unusual pet? Did you know that the Rainforest Clinic in Loxahatchee specializes in exotic pets? They see pets that other vets don't. Parrots and chickens, ducks, geese, turtles, snakes, goats, pigs, lizards, and even monkeys. Are you a beekeeper? Dr. Club, the first of her kind in the area? Yes, she takes care of bees as well. Dr. Susan Club has decades of experience and known around the world for her reputation as a premier avian vet. Located at 3319 E Road in Loxahatchee, just a short distance north of Okeechobee Road, you will find a modern clinic with in-house labs, which allow you to get your test answers quickly. You can find them online at www.susanclub.com. That's www.susanclubb.com. Or you can reach her at 561-795-4878. It's Dr. Susan Club. That's 561-795-4878. The Rainforest Clinic located in Loxahatchee. 561-795-4878. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett Packer, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com. For all your toner needs, all toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner. Owner. Call or email us today. Fishing in the water. 
Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. Good morning. Thank you for taking the time to join in and letting us share with you something I personally love, and that is to talk about fishing and the opportunities that fishing brings some of the very many different applications of it out here uh, in Florida. We do freshwater, we do backwater, we do offshore, we do from shore. Uh, and it's just uh, something in my life experience that has been a vital part of holding our family together. Uh, this morning, I've got Carolyn with Atlas Tracks with me. Thank you, Carolyn, for joining in. Greatly appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. I learn something every time I'm on the show and every time I listen to the show from all the guests that we have. I, I, I like the blueberry hot sauce. I would never, ever thought of that. <laughs> blueberry hot sauce. Oh, my goodness. All right. My next guest is Joe Hector. Joe puts on a tournament that is out of Pompano, I think. It's called the Extreme Kayak Fishing Tournament. And uh, last week was the tournament. And if any of you remember, last week the wind was blowing. So I'm interested in hearing what, uh, what he's going to report to us. Good morning, sir. Hey, how's it going? Go ahead, Carolyn. Hey, Joe, how's it going? I'm over here in Pompano, too. Oh, awesome, awesome. Yeah, it's going well here. It's got a nice little cold front, and, uh, yeah, we had a unbelievable uh, record-setting tournament uh, last weekend. Um, as most people know, if they're, if they're following, if they're not following, uh, day one, we actually had to, um, we, we couldn't do it. It was too, the wind was just insane. And, uh, you know, most people that know me know I'll go if we can go. But it was, because uh, day two was three to five, so it was still windy. Uh, but, you know, that's why we make it two days, so that anglers get another opportunity to still fish and, and we get to put on that event still. So it ended up working out, and these guys went out day two, and it was, insane literally like a chinese fire drill uh on the help boats our radio was going from 8 a.m until 1 p.m and we had a record 22 sailfish landed uh 17 sailfish lost and the winner of the tournament rob rodriguez uh won the tournament with four landed sailfish Holy I just think smokes. it's amazing when I look at some of the videos on your Facebook page, how, uh, and I just came back from Costa Rica, Joe, where I fought a couple of nice sailfish. I couldn't imagine wow. the, 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 the struggle and the, the fight in a kayak. And, and it just looks so exciting when they finally get these to the boat and hold them by the bill and, and release them. It's just exciting footage. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the beauty too, of our, um, of our committee and help boats. You know, we, uh, we had two help boats on the water and, you know, the communication was just outstanding, uh, you know, to get there, document these fish, and also, in some cases, help in the release to make sure they swim away good. And, yeah, it was just all around uh, uh, very professional, and I, I, the team that we put together for this one was, was uh, outstanding. Can you, can you tell our listeners a little bit about how far do they go? I know they launch from the beach. I've been to some of your events. They're, they're fun family events with the festivals. How, how far do people go offshore? What, what time do, is the lines in, lines out? How does the kayak tournament work? So, uh, so we put on different tournaments. With, with the Sailfish tournament, if people are interested in that uh, for next year, it's a two-day tournament, and um, shoot-off will be at 730 and everyone meets at the south side of Pompano Pier. Uh, we also do a kickoff party the night before, which would be on a Friday. And uh, that will be at Brews Room in Pompano. And we go over everything there as well. And we also have an awesome raffle to benefit the Broward Children's Center. And they've been with us for years. And then, um, so, you know, Saturday they'll shoot off and uh, if it's two days. And yeah, and lines out will be at three normally. And then on day two, lines out will be at two. And then they got to be on the beach by four, just in case, uh, let's say someone catches a mahi-mahi for that division. Uh, the scale will be right back where they launched. So they have to be there on the beach by four to, 
weigh in that fish. And that's pretty much how it works for the sailfish tournament. And then, you know, if you're going to do the summer slam events, which is our big ones on the beach, uh, that's more of the family fun events where we have the vendors. Uh, that'll take place in the same area in Pompano uh, on the south side. And uh, with that one, shoot off will range from like 630 to 7. And yeah, with that one, it's a meat tournament. So um, anglers will shoot out and then uh, they'll catch either wahoo, you know, mahi mahi, kingfish, uh, blackfin tuna, all that fun stuff. And they got to be back on the beach by two. And then the show starts because we're going to have a huge, um, you know, for those events, we have a huge stage right on the beach that's presented to us from the city of Pompano. And it's a show. And we play like guess the weight with the fish and uh, we showcase what everyone has caught. And uh, also those fish after the tournament's over and if the angler doesn't want it themselves, uh, those fish will also be donated as well. Sweet. Joe, I have a great, great question. So the sailfish, obviously, you get released. If it's a meat fish tournament and the size of a kayak, if you're very successful catching fish, where do you put them all all day? <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, we, uh, I mean, and we get some big ones, too. We had a 70, uh, 71 pound Wahoo, 64. I mean, we get some monsters. And what these guys do is um, either they use the really big fish bags, the ones that are designed to wear. Uh, you just slide that head straight into the bag where the, you know, it's tied to the front end of the kayak. So it's just an easy access where you can just slide them in there. Um, because obviously weight is essential. So you, you, you want to keep these fish cold. Uh, you know, you don't want them losing any, any kind of water weight or drying out, so to speak, uh, with that Florida sun. So most guys will have that bag. Uh, in some cases, uh, like that monster Wahoo or anything like that, the guys will just literally drape it over them and, and say, you know what? I, I think I got this. And they'll head in uh, because time's essential too. You know, you don't want to be stuck in those, especially in um, summertime, we have those strong North currents and uh, we always put the events around the moon. So they definitely want to come in and, and weigh that fish before they uh, run out of time. I can't imagine. I, you know, I have a picture of Pam Worth. She she co-hosted with me for the longest time. I have a picture of her on the Facebook page with a, a sailfish that is just about as big <laughs> as the vessel that she's in. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's amazing. It really is amazing, some of the stuff that uh, that you guys do. And I, I want to make sure that we we do state that first and foremost with Joe, the first focus that Joe has is your personal safety. He has gone above oh, yeah. and beyond to make sure that when these events are held, your personal safety is of the utmost importance to them. So we want people to have a great time. And in doing so, we want to make sure that they are able to enjoy that great time as they live on and not have something horrible happen. So I want to make sure we take an opportunity to mention that. First and foremost is safety with Joe. You check any of his tournaments you. out, you'll find out that that's his belief system. Uh, he wants oh, to, yeah. he wants to be sure that everybody has a good time and he wants to be sure that everybody goes home having a good time. Um, it really is. Uh, I, I truly don't know how any of them got out there. This what was the last Sunday, right? Yeah. Last Sunday it was, it was, uh, blowing and, uh, I knew, you know, from years past, I mean, this was our 10th year doing these tournaments. So I, I got a pretty good gauge now on, on where these guys are at. I mean, let's face it five years ago we probably wouldn't be able to do that mm -hmm. now um I, I feel like the anglers are evolving just like in any sport mm. and um they're getting better at what they do and uh plus with this one we get so many out-of-towners from other states and even other countries sometimes wow. where you know they're from uh, like for instance we had a group from new jersey right and that's my home state i know what those guys are battling over there to them a normal day is three to five foot seas. Oh, wow. We're here in South Florida. I mean, we're, we're lucky, you know, I mean, yeah. we can get some really calm, beautiful days. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I had a good gauge on it and, uh, they were calling for three to five, 10 to 15 mile an hour winds. And uh, I knew, I knew, uh, our guys would be able to get out there. Wow. Well, I am really, I'm glad you're able to have it. I know that you have, uh, pictures and videos right up on the site. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. We've been, uh, getting it out there like crazy it's been pretty much going viral uh, i also also did live feeds during the event oh wow so if yeah so if people go to my um my business personal page which is joe hector and they 
they uh, give it a like and go on there. They can see those live feeds for themselves. Um, and then we also have uh, uh, not all the pictures up yet. We have so much content to go over still. It's kind of insane. I've been doing that all week. Uh, but we do have uh, some photos up on the website uh, with also all the winners and, and all that. So uh, you can go to extremekayakvision.com and check out the winners and all that and future tournaments coming up like our exotic roundup tournament which will be our very first uh freshwater tournament which only focuses on exotic fish like huh. peacocks and uh, clown knife fish are the two main fish for instance wow that's a, um, that's a change <laughs> yeah 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 so we're adding that and trying to cast our net out a little wider to to uh you know grow our demographic and the brand so um, we're excited for that. That's taking place April 18th. Um, but yeah, so yeah, people can uh, also go to our, um, our Instagram, which is, uh, showcasing a lot and that's just extreme kayak fishing, one word, uh, or they can go to my personal Instagram, which is joe.hector.kayak. Cool. I'm, I'm, uh, very excited to hear about the, the stuff that's coming up here. Um, I don't, you know, I really don't know how some of these people are able to do it. It does require a degree of skill to be able to, to balance yourself in this. What is an average width of a kayak, Joe? I know you, you this is how you started all of this is because you are you originally were a kayak, or you still are, a kayak angler. What is the average width yeah. of, a, of a kayak? Uh, Three feet? The thing, there's so, yeah, I mean, I would say, yeah, right around there, it just, there's so many different kinds now and so many different sizes. Uh, lengthwise, I would say for the most part, most of them are going to be, you know, 11 foot, 10 foot, 12 foot. Um, the, the Revo 13, I think, is the is the max for the Hobies anyway. Um, but, yeah, it's um, these kayaks today in general are made for that offshore element. So oh. if someone is interested in getting into the sport, just know that the types of kayaks created today are made for this. They're oh, made to go out in that man. kind of weather. So, um, you know, that's, that's the beauty of, again, the evolving of the sport is now a lot of people are seeing tournaments like mine and designing stuff to gear towards that, to grow um, pretty much the whole sport in general. Mm -hmm. Wow. Joe, I have, a, I have a question, Joe. So I do a lot of sure. offshore fishing where we're putting five to seven lines out on these sport fish, uh, flying kites, things like that. How many lines sure. are the kayak fishermen putting out, and how do you handle a double hookup? Ooh, good question. Yeah, so it's, actually that's a great question because we had an angler that got second, Stephen Klein. Uh, he won because he landed both sailfish on a double hookup. Wow. And we had an angler catch a, a sailfish on the kite as well during that <laughs> tournament. Um, so... First end of your question, I think, was the double header. Um, basically, lines, uh, they're putting out three to four. Uh, some guys still using two, like myself, to keep it simple. Uh, but, yeah, they are putting out a good amount of lines. Wow. Um, but, yeah, like three to – I would say three It would be max for most of these guys. Some of them that are really skilled are using four. Uh, and then we also have the kite fishermen. Um, you know, we have a group of guys that – they're, they fish on these big sport fishes and all that and CVs and stuff, but they'll fish my tournament and just get a kayak for the day to fish it. And it, it's amazing to see their skill um, go from being on like a sport fish to getting in a kayak and still being able to kite fish. It's pretty remarkable. They're kite fishing from a kayak? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm Wow. How far offshore, Joe? How many miles are these guys and ladies and men going offshore with the kayaks? Uh, that's the beauty of South Florida. I mean, we, we were getting much, yeah. uh, sailfish in half a mile out. Yeah. Um, you know, you can get, especially this time of year, you can get some nice sailfish from, you know, 40 foot all the way to 200 feet. So, um, yeah, it, it's pretty remarkable, South Florida, and, and you know, how that, that uh, Gulf Stream runs so close. Yeah, where we are up here, it kind of dips in where we are up here, so it doesn't take much. Not like... Uh, down in the Keys, in the Keys, it took a ways to, to get really out into the sure. deep, deep water. Um, oh, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. go ahead. A lot of people say to me, Joe, you know, you got to do a tournament in the Keys. And I tell them, I'm like, it's not what you think. It's not, it's not like It's beautiful, here, yeah, you know but it's I'm a saying? different, yeah. It, it, the the water is gorgeous, but it's, uh, it is mm -hmm. completely different. It's not like it is up here. 
at all. I mean, here it's just literally a hop, skip, and a jump, and you're in the, in the Gulf Stream. Down there, you got to you got to work at it. <laughs> I don't know how long oh, yeah. it would take them, but they'd they'd have to work at it. It'd take a, take a little ways to go down there. All right, my friend, I want to thank you so much. I'm so grateful for what you do, and uh, very happy to hear the update. I, I'm truly amazed that some of these people were, really did go out there and were even successful. For me, I would have probably either been changing my pants or had to change my barf bag, one of the two. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it shows you the, uh, you know, just the, the sport in general and how, how it's changing, you know. I mean, yeah. it's, it's these guys now, you know, and especially a tournament like this, right, where you're getting that many sailfish, it proves, you know, if you can get out there and, and the way these kayaks are designed, you know, nobody got hurt. Everyone got out there and almost everyone got fish. So it just shows these guys, listen, I mean, it's, it's different today. It's yeah, not what it, it was is. back then, you know, yeah. so you could do it. Wow. Well, again, I appreciate it, sir. I wish you an awesome day. I'm going to let Carolyn say goodbye to you and then we're going to go to a break. Joe, I'm sure I'll see you around town and I haven't had a chance, but congratulations on your baby. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And it's always good to talk to you guys, and I really appreciate you guys having me on and, and letting me uh, talk about these tournaments. Well, I, I God really bless you, it. my friend. Here we go. Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Whitting. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped, even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion. Air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. Want to give your pet the celebrity treatment? Have you heard of Holly Wolf Pet Grooming and Care in Royal Palm Beach? They're located just off State Road 7 and have been servicing the area for 14 years. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care is the home of the Blueberry Facial, also specializing in tartar removal with eight years of assisting in dental procedures. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care? They're more than just about dogs. They are the only experienced cat groomer in the area. They also cater to all breeds and sizes and open six days a week. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care, located just north of the Super Walmart in Royal Palm Beach. You can find them at 250 Business Parkway. They specialize in shampoos with no extra charge. Flea and tick dips also available. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care. You can give them a call at 561-793-9992. They also provide gift certificates for those looking for that special present. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care. 561-793-9992. Do you need toner for your Epson, Hewlett-Packard, Canon, Brother, Apple, or Sharp printers? Look no further than Laser Technologies. In business for over 20 years, they offer the lowest prices on toner on the web. They can also repair your laser printers and toners fast and easy. Call their expert staff today at 561-792-9600 or email us at service at laser-technologies.com. For all your toner needs, all toner is shipped nationwide. Why wait? Get the lowest prices on toner call or email us today while other stations just talk a good game we win it hey sounds like somebody's having a lot of fun all i grab a fishing pole and cast it in the water i fish until dawn oh my i caught a shark i'm fishing it all and on when the sun shines all day Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Chris Gala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. Good morning to you. If you're just joining us, we will have an archive set up on the uh, Facebook page. There'll be a link there. 
And you can go to our Facebook page, Fishing in Florida. Give us a like while you're there. Helps us uh, remain relevant in the searches. And uh, you'll find a link to the uh, to the archive. In the meantime, there's plenty of different ways that you can listen to us. I want to say make sure we give thanks to uh, our some of our affiliates, High Point Radio out of uh, New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Thank you, High Point Radio, 1690 AM. They're also carrying the show. Uh, KYAH, 540 AM out of uh, Utah. Thank you, KYAH. A new affiliate, Yacht, uh, let's try that in English for Scala, YachtRockMiami.com. Smooth grooves all day long, all night strong. Uh, our latest affiliate, thank you, Yacht Rock Miami. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, so we have uh, uh, more and more listeners all the time, and it is an honor and a privilege to be able to do this. One of my passions uh, in, in doing this is to be able to give families something to do. Something uh, that is refreshing, something that's away from all of the hustle and the bustle and the confusion of the technology that we have. That you go back and you enjoy what God has given us. And uh, that's what we like to talk. That's what I like to talk about. And Carolyn, uh, who is uh, with Atlas Tracks, she's my co-host this morning. I think she kind of feels along the same way. You feel the same way, Carolyn? I feel 100% the same way, Riscala. It's always uh, get back to basics, get out, enjoy the surroundings, the weather. Um, it doesn't cost a lot of money to go out and have a good time and, and bring your family along. Yeah, so yeah, I agree. I'm, yeah, we can. you can go from one extreme to the other with fishing. You can. It can be as simple as a cane pole, and it can be as, as sophisticated as a, some of this stuff is amazing how many thousands of dollars it costs. The point is that you're getting away from all of the hustle and the bustle, and you're taking time to enjoy life that, uh, that that all the surroundings that we have around us uh, my next guest carol carol is with uh, mermaid vodka um carol and carolyn i have some seem tongue twisting me here um happen to know each other uh because they are fishing uh what would you call it uh, carol fishing mates fishing teammates fishing good morning, teammates Galia. good morning carolyn hi carol it's been a while a couple days huh <laughs> at least at least I'm still remembering all those fond memories we made down in Costa Rica fishing the ladies' tournament out of Los Sueños. And then, see, that's what it's about, is to making memories. That's, uh, for me, that's really, you know, what better gift can you give somebody? I mean, I know we could spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on gifts to give each other, but you can't put a price on what we're talking about. This is something that you carry with you for the rest of your life. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm up there in, in numbers of years now. I can still remember the things that my parents did for me and the greatest of them was to take us fishing every weekend almost every weekend take us fishing as a family so how you doing my dear uh, carol how are you great thanks for asking Rascalia. we're just um just got in last night from we were out snapper fishing Ooh. Of fond memories uh snapper bite was good last night right off uh dania beach um right out there in the channel we were fishing and um Caught uh, several different species, snapper. Um, you know, we had to throw a grouper back. We even had a grouper come on. Oh, darn. Some, uh, some uh, really, just really good bite. And, uh, of course, a great time. The wind uh, calmed down for a little while, and we were able to fill the cooler and, and then come on back. So we uh, we got back to the dock at about one thirty, and, uh, you know, just... Clean and fish this morning. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and so, it's, is that going to be what we uh, what you have for uh, for dinner tonight? It is. It is. Wow. We have uh, twelve people coming over. Oh my! Like the neighbors and, and friends and family, and it's a great time. You know, mm. it's it's great to go out and catch fish, but it's really so fun to just share it with other people and and feed people, and mm. that's what it's all about. You know, putting food on the table. We. Uh, Anything that we we catch, uh, we generally eat and uh, share with other people, and wow. and yeah, you know, talk about you know the fun we had catching them, and that's memories. It's just a good time. Yep, that's lifelong memories. Uh, so you want to give me your address, and I'll be over. Bruce <laughs> <laughs> Gallo, that's the second address and invitation we got today on the show oh, for, yeah. for uh, tables of twelve. Wow, my gosh, yes, yes, we had. Um, we had Rachel Cavello on earlier. She's with FishmongerProved.com, uh, Fishmonger Proved Magazine as well. And um, she, she was saying how she had a table built out back for, what, what was it, Carol, Carolyn, uh, 
14? 14. 14 <laughs> people. Wow. Oh, my goodness. That kind of stuff that uh, really brings fond memories, warms your heart. You know, people getting together, enjoying each other's company, enjoying uh, the fruits of what you've done. Um, that, to me, is the richest part of life that you can have. There's just no amount of money that you can put on that. that. That's something that you carry with you for the rest of your life. And every time, for people like me, I, I glance back at it, it brings a special feeling, you know, a warming of the heart, a, a, a it's just a special feeling. So I'm grateful that, for people that do stuff like that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I'd love to share. I'd love to share a little story about Carol. As, as you know, we went down to Costa Rica last week. We were invited to fish our breast cancer team uh, out of Los Sueños. And Carol was the star of the day. She hooked up to uh, Blue Marlin and three sailfish. Wow. So she kept us in first and second place almost all, all day. Uh, we finally finished fifth, which was an amazing a feat for us being there for the first time. Uh, but she, she, I'm so proud of her. Uh, I, I couldn't have uh, dreamed of a better, better day for her. Wow. Congratulations, Carol. Thank you so much. And, you know, Carolyn, it's a team. I mean, we, everybody on the team pulled together. You know, it was really hot um, both days, the practice day and the tournament day. The, the heat was incredible. But all four girls, we all stayed in the cockpit of the boat all day. <clears throat> everybody was ready to take, take, uh, you know, take a rod and, when, when we'd get a fish on, you know, everybody else cleared the lines uh, just in case we'd get a fish while we were clearing, which we did. I think that was at um, Liz's, uh, Liz's bite or, or Dorina's. That was Dorina's, the, Dorina's yeah, the Dor- first bite of the tournament. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to have two doubles uh, in the tournament, we <laughs> got, we got uh, all four in on two doubles. That was even uh, more incredible because um, we, we are experienced, but we're not that experienced. You know, so we're learning as we go, and um, we uh, we had a great tournament. And you know, I got to thank Carolyn because she put that all together for us and made that happen. Um, you know, Carolyn with Atlas Tracks, she just uh, you and your company just amazing because you really you go out of your way to do things for our team that um, you know we just I marvel every single time she puts a tournament together or. Or, you know, she had, uh, we were on Maverick yachts on their fantastic uh, boat. And, you know, that was all due to Carolyn and, and her uh, connections and really sharing our wow. story about being breast cancer survivors who fish together. And, and we really try to promote uh, ladies fishing and reaching out to other ladies who may have recently been diagnosed or who have questions about, you know, what we went through. And, um, you know, it's just great to be able to combine something that we're passionate about uh, and and also, you know, help other people at the same time. And give them hope. Give them yeah. hope. Uh, my mom had uh, breast cancer, and it was uh, quite some time ago, and, and uh, there wasn't a lot of hope, and there wasn't a lot of support. Um, and she was forever changed because her physical body had changed, and there was a lot of focus on that. And there wasn't a lot of people to talk to, and uh, it was a it was a difficult time for her acclimating, you know, years later to what happened. So what you do and what Carolyn does is a testimony that uh, there's hope, and there's people out there who who uh, will not turn their back on you, will do the opposite. They'll be generous and they'll do things for you, knowing that you have been through hell and back. Um, and it's kind of their way. I know for me personally, it would be my way of saying thank you for, you know, being open about what, what has happened. And a lot of people don't like to talk about that, that it's not a really a nice subject, but it's happening all over our society. It's a common thing with cancer. And when we have people who go through that and uh, we witness, I witnessed just recently a friend of mine with the same issue, breast cancer again, uh, go through that. Um, not only is it draining on, on, on your, your financial life, it's draining on you and your physical life and your spiritual life. And when people like Carol and Carolyn step up and show, I mean, they don't just speak it. They show they're out there literally doing, you know, because I know when my mom went through it, she felt like, oh, my gosh, this is like this is it for me. This is the end of my life. And, you know, my dad and I and my brother reassuring her over and over, no, 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 no. But then when you have uh, an example, here's ladies out there literally doing you know, stuff that uh, putting men to shame, if you will. Um, it gives other people hope, and I'm grateful for that. I'm glad that you are able to do it. I'm grateful that you are that you do it. I'm grateful that you have a small company. This is a difference. You mentioned about Carolyn 
and the service that she's done and the things that she's able to do. I believe, again, this is my personal opinion because I'm a small business owner and this is how I believe in my business. I believe that because of Carolyn being a small business owner, a, a family-owned small business, she's able to do that. Just like I believe with, with your business, uh, Carol, a small family-owned business, you're able to provide a service, I believe, that is greater than any of these large companies because you realize what how important the customer is. When they get bigger and bigger and bigger, it seems like we just become a number after a while. Call AT&T or, or Comcast or one of these other guys when you need help and see how long it takes you to get help. Call somebody like Carolyn and see how long it takes you to get help. The difference is astounding. Uh, so this is why I like support locally owned, family owned businesses. This is why I like to support it. I believe that this country was built on the backs of businesses like ours. We're the guys who end up paying the taxes. We don't have the millions of dollars that it takes to find the loopholes to get it all around. We just pay it and go on with our lives. So it's really us. And so in support of us, all of you listening, small locally owned businesses, whatever that might be, let that be your, your preference whenever possible. I know sometimes it's not. It's just not because of the way things are. But whenever it's possible, that's what I do. I go with small family-owned, locally-owned businesses. And that's what we're talking about here with Carol and Carolyn. Carol has um, Mermaid Vodka USA, I believe it is, right? Yep, Mermaid Vodka, and our website's mermaidvodkausa.com. Um, and, and and I can, you know, relate to what you're saying, Rascalia, because I, I'm the product of a family-owned business. My father had a business for 62 years. And my brothers both worked in the business for him. My dad took us fishing whenever his business would allow. With That's mm-hmm. what we did. That was mm-hmm. our activity, if you will. We were out fishing as a family and uh, putting food on the table. And, you know, we like to say when, when you support a small family-owned business, you, that's what you're doing. You're putting food on a family's yep. table. You're paying for a kid's college education. You're not buying, you know, a CEO's fourth or fifth vacation home yep. or, or private jet. So uh, we appreciate the support we get from from our customers. You know, as we say, we sell one bottle at a time. That's <laughs> how it sells. Mm-hmm. And uh, everybody who buys a bottle of Mermaid Vodka, we really appreciate their support because there's a lot of choices out there. Um, you know, being 48 times distilled, it does provide us with an advantage. We have a really super smooth product. So, you know, we're out there spreading the word of Mermaid Vodka, and we appreciate your having us on the show so that we're able to uh, share our, our product information. Sure. I've and, never... And Rascal, I, have to, I have to share a funny story, if I have a moment, with uh, Mermaid Vodka. Yeah. So Carol and I were in Costa Rica, and the only vodka we can find was a non-Mermaid Vodka product. So we actually called one of the girls, a team member, Darina, and asked her to go pick up, buy bottles of Mermaid Vodka, and we paid for her to uh, check her suitcase so that we can get the four bottles of Mermaid Vodka to Costa Rica for, for the rest of the week. <laughs> so we definitely, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we love our Mermaid Vodka. I have never had <laughs> a, a more smooth product than, than uh, Carol's product. I've never. Uh, it was just amazing. Uh, I, I had to ask several times, is this really... I don't know what the I don't remember what the proof was, but it's because it just didn't taste like it. it. It's just a very very smooth. That's the only way I can describe it. Very smooth. Uh, you can tell that it's a high quality product. Uh, it's something that uh, wasn't just put together uh, haphazardly for a profit. You know, I go back to the big companies. If the profit is so important to them. They'll cut corners here and there. That you taste this product, you'll see. Uh, there's no corners cut in any of this. This is done in a very uh, proper manner, and the result is speaks for itself. Taste speaks for itself. Uh, so you can try it sometime. Those of you who are legal age, <laughs> try it sometime. <laughs> yep, and we well, uh, I tell us, say for our lawyers, always drink your mermaid vodka responsibly, please. Yep. Can you but, tell us, uh, our listeners, where they can go purchase your product? Yep, well, any total wine in the state of Florida carries mermaid vodka, as does ABC Liquors. And you'll find it in a lot of local uh, family-owned uh, liquor outlets as well. So we're we're very fortunate that we've spread throughout the state of Florida, and we're now looking at other states to expand into. So uh, again, it's due due to the support that we receive from our customers, from Riscalia and your show, and a lot of the different um, businesses that that support us by carrying our product. They have choices. And uh, we appreciate the shelf space. And it's made in Florida, right? 
it, it is. It's made in Fort Myers, Florida. Uh, that's where we distill it. Like you said, we take a lot of care in, in how the product is produced. Um, the one thing we wanted to make sure was that we had a product that was very smooth, but also um, offered certain advantages, being gluten-free, no sugar added, and um, <clears throat> it's made from organic corn that comes from a farm in Jacksonville. Wow. So it's, it's one of the few products that can say it's uh, Florida through and through. Hmm. And everything that's in the that's bottle amazing. comes from Florida. Wow. And uh, organic is important as well. Uh, I could tell a whole, a whole list of things about non-organic. So that's great. Um, yeah. I was going to mention something in my, my mind. This is morning. You know, I'm just still waking up. I was going to mention something, and it completely has slipped my mind at this point. And we're getting close to a break. So let me do this while I have a moment. Let me give you an opportunity. If people want more information about what it is, uh, Carol, um, let, uh, let's get that info out there. People can go to our website, mermaidvodkausa.com. Uh, we're on Facebook, at Mermaid Vodka. We're on Instagram, at Mermaid Vodka. And we're on Twitter. Uh, we've, we've started tweeting recently, um, and we're on there at uh, Mermaid Vodka USA. So we, uh, we've we got quite a few places you can find information about us. We respond directly to all messages. We get quite a few messages from people uh, reaching out, wanting to know where they can purchase it. We list all the outlets that it's available for purchase on the website, and including uh, we also put all the events that we support um the different fishing tournaments and some of the different uh, charitable causes that we support, like 1,000 Mermaids, Boys and Girls Club, Rotary. We're, we're really um, big on supporting a lot of the local uh, community-based uh, charities. Now, you find that a lot of the locally owned, family-owned businesses, this is what they do. They give back to the community. They understand the the uh, the benefits of doing that and uh, you know so I'm I'm ever so grateful for what you do my dear and looking forward to having you back on in the future with an update I wish you well and an awesome day I'm going to let Carolyn say goodbye and we're going to go to a break Carol I'm looking forward to fishing with you February 1st at the Offshore Angler Pompano Beach Selfish Tournament so uh, we'll see you in a couple days and and for the Atlas Tracks Mermaid Fishing Team thanks Carolyn I can't wait to fish with you again. All right. Love you, girl. All right. Here we go. You're listening to the Fishing in Florida show with your host, Scala Stevens. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Thinking of moving? Before you do anything else, call Diane Whitting. She provides a concierge service. Things like having your home or condo packed and shipped, even take care of your home repairs or upgrades. Diane has the expertise to get it done. As a seller, you will have constant contact. She will furnish you with bids on any services that might need completion, air conditioning, plumbing, handyman, and even cleaning. Living up north and have a home to sell here in South Florida? Just give her the keys, address, and a signature. Your payment will be wired when the property is sold. That's right, Diane does it all. Thinking of buying? Diane has great listening skills. Tell her what you want, give her your budget, and like a genie, she will make your real estate wish come true. There's no regrets when you choose Diane Wittick. To reach Diane, call 561-247-5478. That's 561-247-5478. Want to give your pet the celebrity treatment? Have you heard of Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care in Royal Palm Beach? They're located just off State Road 7 and have been servicing the area for 14 years. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care is the home of the Blueberry Facial, also specializing in tartar removal with eight years of assisting in dental procedures. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care? They're more than just about dogs. They are the only experienced cat groomer in the area. They also cater to all breeds and sizes and open six days a week. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care, located just north of the Super Walmart in Royal Palm Beach. You can find them at 250 Business Parkway. They specialize in shampoos with no extra charge. Flea and tick dips also available. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care. You can give them a call at 561-793-9992. They also provide gift certificates for those looking for that special present. Hollywood Pet Grooming and Care. 561-793-9992. Do you own a laser printer, copier, or a fax? Well then, listen close to this announcement. Laser Technologies has been providing high-quality, frustration-free toner cartridges that are guaranteed not to harm your equipment for over 20 years. 
Laser Technologies will save you on your supplies with high quality and fast delivery. Savings up to 50%. Laser Technologies supplies toner, imaging drums, developer and cartridges for most of the major brands. For a price quote, send an email to service at laser-technologies.com. Include your printer make and model for your part number. Call us at 561-792-9600. That's 561-792-9600. Laser Technologies, providing 100% of the quality at a fraction of the price. 561-792-9600. While other stations just talk a good game, we win it. Good morning from the Sunshine State. Broadcasting from Palm Beach County, it's the Fishing in Florida Show. Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. on the WCET FM Network. And now, here's your host, Riscala. All right, we are back. It is the Fishing in Florida Show. Good morning, good morning to you. If you're just joining us, you've missed out on a lot of fun this morning, but don't be alarmed. We ha- will have an archive set up for you by the end of the day. Go to Fish Florida Show, excuse me, go to Fishing in Florida Show on the uh, Facebook and you'll find the archive listed there. In the meantime, I want to make sure we give thanks out to High Point Radio. Thank you, High Point, for carrying the show. Uh, KYAH, thank you, KYAH. We have a new affiliate, YachtRockMiami.com, smooth grooves all day long, all night strong. Thank you, Yacht Rock Miami. Greatly appreciate you carrying the show for us as well. And, of course, our mothership, as I like to refer to it, uh, WCETFM 101.7 out of North Carolina. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it, you guys. Uh, the more listeners, the more fun it is for me, and the more people that we are able to reach uh, some, with some of the messages that we have. And, of course, for me, the underlying message of it all is uh, family is the greatest gift that we can have. And uh, in hopes of giving you people out there an option of something to do as a family to make, uh, to make lifelong memories, whether it's a two-person family, a four-person family, however many people that might be, that you do it together. And uh, in, the, in the process of doing that, you're building up uh, bonds. And that's uh, to me, is the most important, the greatest gifts that we can do is uh, to give each other of our time and share our experiences. This morning, I have uh, Carolyn with Atlas Tracks. Uh, protect what you love to the max. Call Carolyn at Atlas Tracks. Welcome back, Carolyn. Absolutely, Riscala. Thanks so much. And uh, one of my most favorite anglers, female anglers, is uh, Angelia. Angelia is down in the Keys, and she's also another one of those who is so graceful by sharing her time with me on Sunday mornings and giving us the fishing report out of Down in the Keys. Good morning, Angelia. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well, my dear. Good morning, Angelia. Hi. How are you, Carol? Nice to see see you. Oh, absolutely. I, I loved it last week. Looking forward to your fishing report. Well, I tell you what, the fishing down in the Keys, you guys, has been hot. I've been doing a little bit of everything and I have to say, I'm not a big backcountry fisher, but it is on fire right now, you guys. Uh, black drum, the redfish are still biting. Mm. Uh, people are coming up with a bunch of triple tail. Uh, the permits are getting caught constantly right now. And uh, on top of doing some backcountry fishing, which I usually don't do, uh, I've been out on your favorite place a lot, Rizala, Ooh. Alligator Reef. Ooh. And Alligator Reef has been on fire oh, and we've man. seen so many different species we've been catching lately uh wow. i don't know if anybody's familiar with the toros down here they're a bright red fish with big giant eyes uh some people call them orange ruffies oh but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah oh we are catching them up like crazy my knife is dull from cleaning this fish <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Orgies have been gigantic and coming in the numbers. The Toros, the Orange Ruffies, whatever you want to call them, have been coming in in big numbers. Uh, we've been catching up rainbow runners off the back of the boat, chumming like insane, uh, along with 
uh, the goober bite's still on fire because I know they all got the memo that season's closed. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the season closes, the goopers start coming up in numbers and huge. But, uh, yeah, the fishing's been ultra fun down here lately. Uh, we've been avoiding the wind and the weather and had a couple beautiful days. It's a little chilly out here this morning. And sorry for the boat noise. But, uh, yeah, we don't but hear yeah, it. Yeah. Fishing, fishing's been fantastic. Water is so clear right now up here or uh, down here that uh, you can see the bottom at 100 foot on the wow. on alligator reef. Wow, that's oh, yeah. amazing. You can wow. see the fish halfway up. You can start seeing color about halfway up. It's insane. Wow, that is <laughs> amazing. Jeez. Yeah, so, yeah I, saw, I saw a beautiful um, uh, mahi that you posted on your Facebook page, too. That's a decent size for that. Okay, for can, being you, a little... can you believe that the mahi are still being caught? Okay, and I've got a great mahi story from the last week. Mm-hmm. I've got a yellowtail rig out. I am yellowtailing. I've got 15 pound test and a jig on, a yellowtail jig, okay? Anybody who fishes knows what I'm talking about. Well, I get something on my little light rod with my little light line and my little light hook, and it is just going nuts. <laughs> I mean, running line out on me. I'm thinking it's going to spool me. So I play it safe and let it run and play with it for a while. And would you guys believe it was a four-foot mahi? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. And, yes, I did get him to the boat on my light gear, and it felt like a monster on that light gear. But, yeah, he bit a jig head, and he was up on alligator reef. Oh, my so gosh. it is just a really good time down here. When Winter fishing is always my favorite, but to throw in the mahi bite like it's been – and then the backcountry craziness, it has just been great down here. Really good time. Anybody who has not fished down here or loves to fish down here, please come down and fish this That's winter. It's amazing. I, I, I yeah. love the water down there. Uh, there healthy, was healthy water. There was a couple of times that we would, we would go out, I don't know how far, maybe several hundred yards um, east of the lighthouse and then drift back in across you know where where the hump the, where it comes real where it goes deep and then gets kind of shallow again and uh we were pretty close to the lighthouse uh, on a couple of occasions and the peanut dolphin came through. a whole school of peanut dolphin came through um and it was to me it was something that was like wow i didn't realize that they would come in so close i don't know what it was on the particular occasions but it was a couple of times that that happened um, that you can, you look down in the water and the water's clear and all of a sudden it's just hundreds of these things running through. They didn't stick around. They just ran through, but it was amazing to watch. Um, so and they're I, beautiful in the water. They're so oh, brightly they, yeah. colored and gorgeous the in the teal, water. They have that teal glow to them. It's uh, They are oh, very pretty yeah. fish. Very pretty. There's so much to be seen down in the Keys. Um, I, I miss that so much. The ability of the, when I lived in Cutler Ridge, which was too far from there. I could hop down there pretty quick, but now where I'm at, it's a little, little more of a trek. I want to, I want to get back down there. So, in in your opinion, the 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 winter time fishing, you're seeing a higher activity during the winter time than the summertime. Well, you know, I'm quite partial to winter fishing anyway because I, uh, you know, in my heart and my my main passion is is offshore sport fishing, and I like to troll right outside of the reef line, and. Uh, it's just that's my favorite time mm-hmm. but this particular year we seem to be catching year-round species plus all of our winter fish our sailfish our wahoo our kingfish and uh it's it's just been it is a little unusual yeah. it's, it's definitely yeah. special this year and uh you know i was away all summer and i was really looking forward to getting home to winter fishing but uh i was teasing about you know i missed my mahi and da 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 I didn't miss anything, Rascal. <laughs> wow. It has just been fantastic. And I have to elaborate on, like you said, uh, just the things that you see out there on the reef. On top of all the fish that we've been catching, we have had giant sea turtles floating by us every day, mm. which is just a beautiful thing to see. And I've mentioned this before, but it's still happening on a daily basis. You can be anchored up on the reef, and all of a sudden you look out in the distance, and you see thousands of bright silver bait fish just flying through the air and a sailfish behind them <laughs> and it is just magnificent it makes your you get goosebumps and you get all excited like a kid because it is just the most beautiful sight in the world and yeah the things that you see out there have just been awesome i mean really cool wow. <laughs> yeah Sounds- i'm very think- happy 
a, a healthy reef is, is good for everything. It's good for our fisheries. It's good for the wildlife. It's, it's, it's good for our water. It's good for our ecosystem. So, yeah, healthy reef, guys. Hmm. And it looks like you've got a big sailfish season because it, a lot of tournaments are, are coming up in the next couple of weeks. I think you just had the Ocean Reef out of Key Largo. You've got a Chica Lodge tournament coming up, or maybe this Absolutely. weekend, Island Rada Sailfish Tournament next weekend. Uh, we're, the the ladies uh, team was trying to get in that. Yeah, the sailfish tournaments are going every weekend right now. And, guys, you go out there. Yesterday there must have been, I mean, 100 boats just in sight, and half of them are kite fishing. So the mm. sailfish is on fire. I've wow. heard of guys catching and releasing as many as a dozen in a day. And wow. I've got three under my belt this year, so I'm happy. <laughs> but, yes, the sailfish uh, season has definitely commenced. They are here. They are here in numbers. The tournaments are going on every single weekend. And anybody jump on some social media and check out the pictures because it's just a blast. I mean, really good time. And it's uh, you're the second person I think, second or maybe even third person today that mentioned kite fishing. Mr. Joe was one of them. I think it was just Joe. And I think you're the second person today that mentioned about kite fishing. We were talking to Joe Hector with the Extreme Kayak tournaments, and uh, I was kind of surprised that he said that there were people out there in kayaks using kites. You know, absolutely, That's, I see it all the time. And I'll tell you my little secret: if anybody likes to troll and isn't a kite fisher, because I don't kite fish off of my boat i'll go on other people's boats and kite fish but i'm not a big kite fisher Mm -hmm. and i like to troll just off of the reef line well if the tide is going out and what these guys normally do is they they anchor up on the reef and they put the kites out for the sailfish and to keep their patrons or their clients busy on the charter boats while they're waiting for the sailfish bite they'll yellowtail Hmm. off the stern and what i do is, is they chum the water all up the yellowtail, and if the tide's going out, they're on the reef, and I like to troll, you know, uh, just off the reef edge where the water drops off deep, and I capitalize on that tide going, that outgoing tide, because all their chum is running out to me. So the bite on the reef has just been insane for me, mm. and I love it when the tide's going out and the sail fishers, the, the kite fishers are all there, uh, and I capitalize on their chum, and it's just it, it really, really works. So anybody who likes to troll that reef line, keep that in mind and watch your outgoing tide and capitalize on those guys' chum. You know, we might well, as well all use it. <laughs> that, that, those are the wise words of an experienced angler right there. Yeah, and I'm not much for a, I'm not much of a kite fisherman either. I, I tell people I might as well just throw the kite overboard and don't even worry about putting it in the water because that's where it's going to go anyways. Absolutely, and and I am catching sailfish on a regular basis trolling. So why should I go to the trouble of kite fishing? And that kind of limits what you get to catch. Now, if you're a if you're in a sailfish tournament, then yeah, that's what you're going to do. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm going for you know whatever species wants to bite that day and hoping <laughs> for something good to eat, like a big fat mm. wahoo or a kingfish for some fish dip, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, if I'm catching them trolling, I'm not going to bother with kite fishing and limit mm. my catch. I'm going to capitalize on everything I can catch. And we're you're 100 percent 100 percent right. I won a ladies tournament here in Pompano trolling with the first sailfish of the day, and and we had no live bait. We were just trolling trolling strips. Wow. I have sailfish hit artificial lures, you guys. Yeah. Now that's artificial some, plug diving lures. That's something. That's <laughs> awesome. That's something we haven't uh, mentioned. We're running out of time real quick, <clears throat> and my throat's messing up on me. Um, you're still making lures, right? Absolutely. Yes, sir. I make trolling lures. I uh, make custom trolling lures for people. Uh, they're mostly skirts, like ballyhood skirts and uh, wahoo rigs, but uh, I custom make them, and I can make them in any kind of colors or weights that you like and uh, or hook set sizes that you like, and absolutely. Just get me get in touch and let me know what you like, and uh, I'll get it made for you. Well, that was going to be the next Andrew, question. How, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, FloridaSaltyCowgirl.com will be up and running this week, thank goodness, finally. Uh, my revamped webpage. And they can always reach me on any kind of social media, Florida Salty Cowgirl on Facebook, on Instagram, or you can reach me on my phone anytime, 813-610-0078. I don't answer in the daytime because I'm out in the water, and I'll call you back. <laughs> Lucky girl. Lucky girl. All right. And awesome. I wish you an awesome day. I'm going to let Carolyn say goodbye to you, and then we're going to say goodbye to the listeners after that. Thank you, uh, um, Angelie. I greatly appreciate it. Go ahead, Carolyn. 
Angelia, um, great talking with you. I'd love to have you make some lures for our ladies' breast cancer uh, fishing team. I'll, I'll definitely get in touch with you. That would be an awesome thing for us to show and uh, we'll have do. a tight line. It would be my pleasure. And my pleasure to be on the show, guys. Have a great Sunday. See ya, everybody. See ya. See ya in a week.